Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's a glorious morning. It's prayer time. Not only this morning, but every morning. Because when we think about all of the things that are going on in this world, not only just in our nation, but in other nations and around the entire world, we need prayer, much prayer, more prayer. I heard someone say once that if you have much prayer, you have much power. If you have little prayer, you have little power. If you have no prayer, you have no power. So I ask you this morning to pray along with me, Father. I know that you can think of something, somebody, or some cause that you can pray for. The Lord knows our minds, and he can read our minds. And as we pray this morning, Father, we just ask that you lift up whoever it is or whatever it is that you desire for him to look into and to take care of. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you this morning. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we uplift your kingdom. Father, we realize that it's because of you, Father, and your unconditional love, Father, that we stand here this morning. And Father, we realize that with you, we can do great things. Without you, we can do nothing. And Father, we just thank you, Father, for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. We pray, Father, that as the East Mount Zion family prepares to worship, Father, that you would fix each heart, fix each mind, to be open to what it is that you would have us to hear this morning, Father, that we would be able to minister according to what you desire us to do. Father, we just thank you, Father, that we live in a country, Father, that is free, Father. We can worship whenever however we desire to worship, as long as it's within your will. And Father, we pray for those, Father, who worship, Father, in secret, because if they don't, Father, they're persecuted. Their families many times are persecuted. We thank you this morning, Father, that you have spared us the many disasters, Father, that have come upon other places, Father, in this nation. And other nations as well. We pray for those, Father, who are suffering from floods, from storms, those that are without power, those that are without food, without clothing, without medical care. Father, we see these things all around us. We know that you are in control, Father, but maybe it is because you're trying to get our attention, Father and to remind us that you're still in control. Father, we open our hearts up to you this morning that we would hear what you're trying to say to us. And we pray, Father, that we will understand the things that you would have us to do with us, through us, and for us. Father, we thank you for the East Mount Zion Baptist Church family. We're praying for each and every one of us, Father, that we remain unified, that we would focus our hearts and our minds on you and what you would have us to do. And Father, we just pray, Father, for our pastor. We pray for the vision that you have given him, Father. We pray that we will have the courage and the strength and whatever it is needed to accomplish the vision that you have given him. We pray, Father, for our First Lady who stands by his side. And Father, as we go through this service, Father, we ask that you Forgive us for our sins, Father, because we oftentimes do things, Father, that we think are right, Father, and sometimes they're not. Sometimes, Father, we don't do things that we should do, Father. So what, we thank you that you are a forgiving God, a loving God, a God with all power. 
Father, we just ask, Father, that whatever you do for us, with us, and through us, that you receive the glory, Father, because only you can receive the glory, and only you can receive the praise. And the people of God say amen. 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 comes from the 91st Psalm, verses 1 and 2. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. This is the word of God. Good morning to good morning. you. I say good morning. Good morning. It's a good morning. Yes, it is. It's a blessed morning. It's a praise morning. It's the best morning that you're going to have today. Amen. <laughs> Welcome to the East Mount Zion Baptist Church. We're located at 9990. Euclid Avenue in the great city of Cleveland, Ohio, right in the campus of Cleveland Clinic. Amen. Amen. Cleveland Clinic takes care of your eyes and your hearts and things like that. But the East Mount Zion is here to help you with your soul. Amen. How about that? Amen. How about that? Yes, yeah, somebody ought to praise the Lord. Because the most important thing is our soul. We want good health and wealth and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's our soul that counts. Amen? I've been asked to welcome you. And I'm looking at all the happy faces and we have our masks on, so I'm trying to figure out who's behind that mask. But we're glad to have you. And we're all of the visitors. Are we have any visitors here? Would you just stand for a moment? Visitors. 
Amen. You have to be careful who you entertain. You may be entertaining angels. Amen. We welcome you to the East Mount Zion Baptist Church where the Reverend Dr. Brian A. Cash is the pastor. And all of the East Mount Zion family, we are glad to have you here. Now, those that are watching us, whether it be by YouTube or whatever technology that we're under right now, we ask that you would just sit back, relax, listen to the songs that's going to be sang today. Listen to the prayers and much needed preaching. The word of God. Amen? Because that's what we're here for. To lift you up. To brighten your day. We've had a long week. The Lord has blessed us with beautiful weather. And today we have beautiful weather. Every day is a beautiful day. So we're just thankful that you are tuned in to us today because there's a lot of other places that you could be spending your time with this morning. And some people say that time is money, but I beg to differ. Time is life. So we thank you for your time that you've extended of your life with us today. And now you're about to hear some good singing from these sisters and brothers that's right behind me. I was waiting to hear them, but they told me to come up here now. So let us all say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for your goodness, your goodness and your mercy. And like my mama would say, pray without ceasing, love the Lord with all your heart, be good, and have a wonderful day. Can the church say amen? Can the church say amen? Amen. Come on, y'all. Let me get out there. To Pastor Cash, Reverend Curry, and to all of you, good morning. I'm not going to sing, but this is the second Sunday in September, and this is the Sunday that we have our Sunday school promotion. So in spite of all that's been going on with the pandemic and everything, we do have two students that will be promoted to ongoing to another department. From the uh, junior department, we have um, Smith, Elijah Smith, and then who will be introduced to Sister Brenda Preston to the intermediary department, and Sister Preston will have Nia Turner that's going to the college, the youth class to Sister Winsome Gaines. So we're going to have Elijah come up now. And Elijah, our students have different criteria that they're supposed to meet in the year that they're with us. Elijah, come over here, Elijah. Elijah was to have learned the Beatitudes, so he doesn't know all of it. So Elijah's going to read the Beatitudes for us. He's reading Matthew 5, verses 3 through 12. Good morning. Our scripture is reading from Matthew the fifth chapter, the Beatitudes, verse 3 to 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are, are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger, and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. There is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be ex- ex- exceeding, exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the per- prophets which were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Elijah, Elijah. So, uh, Sister Preston, we present to you Brother Elijah Smith from the junior department. Welcome to the intermediate department. We are on Zoom. We have our service, our lessons every Sunday at 9 o'clock on Zoom. We will send you the link so that you can be on with us, okay? So we look forward to seeing you. Turn on your camera so we can see your handsome face, and we'll have class on Zoom. And we welcome you, and we are praying to continue your growth in the Lord, okay? All right? And here is... Just stand here. And I have uh, Sister Nia Turner. Is any of Nia's family here today? Nia is away at college at Spelman University. So if you all would please keep Nia in your prayers. I do have her uh, contact information if anybody's interested in keeping in touch with her. And we want to keep all of our young people lifted up in prayer. So I will be sending this to Nia and congratulating her. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elijah. Okay, have a seat. Okay, I'm standing in for Sister Darlene Doxy Williams. Sister Williams, as we know, that we have been praying for her brother-in-law, Brother Ron Williams' brother, and he did um, move on, transition yesterday. So she was here, but she had to leave. So we'll keep that family in prayer, the Williams family. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's time to worship our Lord together. Psalm 150 says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Is that you this morning? We're going to sing every praise. It belongs to God this morning. With one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our glory. Hallelujah is to our every praise.
How many praises? Every praise. Every praise. Yeah. Because he's worthy. Yes, he is. Because he's worthy. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. We just want to say, God, I'm grateful. God, I am grateful for what you have done.
you know, we've, we've been here since 930. And we got here at 930 and we started to pray. And we started to read God's word. And we started to sense his spirit entering into the place. So gratefulness is all down on the inside. It started Thursday night. When he, we were here Thursday night. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul. My soul cries. Soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hallel him. Hallelujah. I celebrate him. I rave and I boast and I shine of his goodness. It's the only time I can boast, but I'll boast in him. My soul cries. Hallelujah. Because Lord, I'm grateful for all that you've done for me. I'm grateful for all that you've done for me. And you know what? The world ought to know that. Yeah. East Mount yeah. Zion this morning. Yeah. The world ought to know that. Yeah. That you are grateful for what Jesus Christ has done in your life. Yeah. It's not okay just for us to do it in here. Yeah. So why not we practice yeah. celebrating him in here? Yeah. We offer quiet this morning. For the Lord to have been good to us. When he said, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his goodness, his excellent greatness. Praise him. And we sit mighty quiet because the world is talking really loud about all their stuff. They're talking about it. And we're so quiet. Lift up your gate. Lift up the gate. All your gates and the king of glory shall come in. Let him in. Let him in. So I
I know your spirit's not done yet. Elder Daniels, I, I know your spirit's not done yet. Without a doubt, I know Dante, spirit's not done. I know y'all thinking, who is Dante? That's the piano player over there. When I came in this morning and they introduced me to him, I said, oh, it's easy for me to remember your name because my son's name is Dante. But the Lord gave me a sign this morning that everything was going to be all right. The sign he gave me this morning was Dante and I have on the same colors. <laughs> grateful. 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 Y'all can carry that on a little longer if you want to. It's all right with me. If it's all right with y'all, they can continue to sing that a little bit longer. Grateful. 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 Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Lord, hear us as as we ask you to bless this sermon this day, know, Father God, know that we are grateful. Know, Father God, know that we lift up our voices, that the choir lift up their voices, that Elder Daniels puts things together so it comes across in music that we can come and be before you, Father God, to praise you. We praise you, Father God. Today is the day that the Lord has made. He's made it for us so that we can gather together wherever we are to praise him. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. Amen. 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 Good morning, East Mount Zion. Good morning to those of you who are here and at the church and those who are at home at the church because we do know the, the, the church is not this building. The church is the body of God. The church is those saints who are born again in Christ. So whether you're here or whether you're at home, we welcome you. I asked the Lord to uh, help me this morning. It's, it's been a while since I've stood here. I've been at home and I've been sitting out there listening to some great preaching. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I've been hearing some great preaching lately. Every now and then I have to text my pastor and say, that was okay, pastor. When Pastor asked me to stand in for him this Sunday, I asked him if he had a theme or a scripture he wanted me to come from. And he told me in Pastor Cash's way, Rev, you come in whatever way the Spirit leads you. Now, see, Pastor don't know me very well, and to give me that opportunity, y'all could have got anything this morning. But I love it when the Spirit does his thing. So let us just take a quick moment. Father God, once again, I ask that you calm down my spirit, that you give me a peace in my tongue as I bring forth the word as you have given it to me. Father God, make it plain as it comes out my mouth. And if there's anything that needs to be changed, you know you have the right to change it. In Jesus' name, amen. As most of you know, starting Wednesday, September 15, 2021, East Mount Zion will begin our pastoral installation celebration for our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Brian A. Cash. Let's give him a hand. 
Now, Pastor Cass, is, is, still, is he still on his mission? He's just not here in the city. He across the country bringing the word of God somewhere else. So the theme of the installation is the work continues. Honoring the work of the past, celebrating the present, and looking forward to the future. That's based on Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, we carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Well, a few days after I talked to pastor about preaching this Sunday, the card about the installation came to the house in the mail, and I had my title. The work continues. And my theme, the work continues. You know, as you get older, simplicity kind of pays off. But there was a change from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. The Spirit gave me another thought. The Spirit moved in the process and laid, led me to this thought. In order to continue something, to carry something forward, to persist in something, you must have a beginning, a new birth a starting point. And where better to look at the beginning of the church than the moving of the spirit and the starting of the church in the book of Acts, chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. So I come this morning from Acts chapter 2. Now I talked to Brother Jesse and he asked me what scripture it was and I kept trying to base down and get just a scripture. All I could get was the book of Acts, chapter 2, the starting of the church. As I thought about it, and I kept saying, well, Lord, I need a scripture. And the Spirit said, no, I want you to talk about the church. Acts 2 presents the end of the age of the Mosaic law and the beginning of the church age. It describes the creation of Jesus' church. It was 40 days after Jesus' resurrection and 10 days after Jesus ascended into heaven that 120 Jesus followers waited in a room together in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus had commanded. And because of their obedience, they received the Holy Spirit who gave them the ability to speak different languages in order to share the gospel with a crowd of people who had come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Weeks, also called the Feast of First Fruits, for the Jews. But it would come to be celebrated and called by Christians the Day of Pentecost, meaning the 50th day from Easter Sunday. This was the birthday of the church. The day when the Holy Spirit came like the blowing of a violent wind from heaven, as if to blow out the candle of law and light the candle of the birth of grace. As the believers in Jesus experienced what seemed to be tongues of fires coming to rest on all in the house, as they, feel, as they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That was the beginning beginning of a new thing, a birth of heavenly proportion. Just like another beginning caused by the movement of the Holy Spirit, the conception of Jesus. Remember the angel told Mary, do not be afraid you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. How will this be, Mary asked, and the angel said, as Mary asked the question, I mean, it, when I read that, it's always amazing to me for us to think about Mary asked, I've done nothing. I know no man. I'm a virgin. So how can this be? But the Holy Spirit will come on you, said the angel and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. 
And since I'm talking about the beginning in order for work to continue, it will be an insult to God not to mention the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. If there was no Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2, in the beginning, the first of the first, then there would be no Acts 2, the birth and beginning of the church. And there would be no first sermon concerning Jesus Christ. Like many beginnings, the crowd did not understand what was going on. Some of the crowd was amazed, saying, what does this mean? While others simply mocking said, these men are full of new wine. It was at this point my man Peter, a man of few words, yet always has something to say. That Peter, that ever ready spokesman, addressed the crowd with a first time eloquence, volume, power, and length of words that even surprised Peter as he was enlightened and filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, time not allowing, I'm, not, I'm going to give a quick summary of Peter's sermon, which comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through 36. And I'd ask that you can read this later when you get home. Peter began, in the last days, God says, he would pour out his spirit on all people, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams, leading to that great and glorious day of the Lord. Peter went on to say that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. He told the crowd that Jesus of Nazareth did miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him, and that Jesus was handed over to them by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge that they, they that were there standing before him with the help of wicked men put Jesus to death by nailing him to a cross. That David, seeing what was to come, spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that God has raised this Jesus to life and they were all witnesses of it, that this same Jesus, the Christ, had been exalted to the right hand of God and had received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit who has poured out what they now saw and heard. Can I get an amen? Now, Peter ended his sermon saying, let all Israel be assured of this one thing, God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Well, praise the Lord, Peter took him to the cross. In that first sermon, Peter took him to the cross, and then he took him to the throne. From Jesus' death to his resurrection, that Jesus died for their sins and rose again to now sitting on the right hand of the Father. Peter took them through the grave and brought on a massive conviction. So mighty was the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that there was an immediate, an immediate, an immediate response from the people as they realized their part in the number, in the murder of God's Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Imagine you were in that crowd and you thought back and remembered and thought about that day when you were part of the crowd. I can only imagine how Peter felt as 3,000 Jews responded to the message. He gave no invitation, made no altar call, but because of the Holy Spirit, sinners were responding to the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit was doing his job in revealing the message of God and opening up the hearts of the people, convicting them of their sin and drawing them to Christ. As they asked the question, hmm, what should we do? Think about it. Peter was not preaching to a church, of full, a church full of believers sitting in the pews, hungry for the word of God. No one had brought a friend along to hear the preacher preach. These were unsaved Jews, 
Most of this crowd had been part of the crowd crying out weeks earlier, crucify him, crucify him, crucify Jesus. And now they were crying out, what shall we do? My man Peter told them, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. All who are far off. Do y'all know that, y'all? For all whom the Lord, our God, will call. Did he call you? Yeah. You know, because Jesus wasn't lost. Jesus ain't never been lost. I, I don't know if, if he thought he was lost, but Jesus wasn't lost. It was me that was lost. I wanted to say it was you, but I, I didn't, didn't want to give you. Okay, it was you that was lost too. Me and you were lost, and the Lord came and found us and called us to salvation. With many other words, Peter warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. We ought to put up a banner and just ride the streets and holler and scream. Praise the Lord and save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Even today when the message, the word of God, truly connects to the listener's heart and mind, then the Holy Spirit can do his job and change attitude and behavior. Since the beginning of the church and as God's work continues today and into the future, the Holy Spirit has and will work through the witness of believers. There are almost always three things present when a non-believer, a sinner, is saved. The Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and a man or woman of God. The Holy Spirit takes the word of God, spoken by a child of God, and applies it to the heart of a sinner in order to bring on a new birth from heaven to rebirth a child of God. And so in a quick understanding of that, you're not born a child of God. You're born a creature of God. And until you get born again, you are not part of the family of God. That's why, in the end, when you die, there's only two places for you to go. You can go home to your father, where you've been rebirthed to, or you can go to the lake of fire, to where you will be with the other father. Now, you might say, I ain't chosen either one. Well, guess what? If you ain't chose Jesus, you ain't chose nothing. Jesus said to Nicodemus, marvel not that I said unto you, you must, you must, you must be born again. How many of you know that God is the ultimate provider? Amen, amen. When the church walks in its purpose and does its job, God will handle the rest. Colossians 1.18 says, Christ is the head of the body, made up of his people. This is his church, which he began and built. Jesus told Peter, I will build my house. Not my house. Jesus told him he would build his house. And the gates of hell shall not overcome, overpower, conquer, or prevail against it. When the Lord builds his house, he doesn't ask it to be radical, extreme, or over the top. He asks us to follow the simple ways of grace and the faithfulness of the word and spirit of God. If we do that, God will take care of the extraordinary parts. I mean, what do you call 3,000 people becoming new believers after the first sermon preached by a newly ordained preacher about the good news of Christ? Yes, the doors of the church were open. An invitation was given. It just wasn't given by Peter, but by the Holy Spirit. When I think of the good news of Christ, I think of his story from Genesis to Revelation and all the in-between. When I think of the good news of Christ, I think about John's greeting to the churches in the name of the triune God found in Revelation 1-4. 
Grace be unto you, and peace from God, who is and who was and who is to come. When I think of the good news of Christ, I think about what Christ himself said to John in Revelations 1, 17 through 19. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now, look, I am alive forevermore. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. That is the legacy of the church, the blueprint of its existence, the promise of its going on. Three stages of hope, starting with the church's coming into existence, what we have seen. Moving into its time of yet holding on, what is now. Finishing up in the victory, what will take place after everlasting existence with Christ, who is the head of the church. Now, in case anybody just want, wonder where, where I got yet holding on from, Sister Mildred probably around here somewhere. And I know, y'all know every now and then when you ask Sister Mildred, Mildred, how's it going today? Yeah, <laughs> yet holding on. That's what we're doing in this period of the church. The church now in this world is holding on. But there will be a day. Faith in Christ is to turn to Christ. When you turn to Christ, you turn from something. If you don't turn from something, then you aren't really turning to Christ. When an unsaved person has faith and believes in Jesus, he is repenting, turning from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, from living to the flesh to living in the spirit. John 4, 24 says, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Now, just, 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 just for a quick moment, you know, I, I like to do demonstrations. That's why I, I, I love pa our pastor Cass, because, you know, he flow right into demonstrating, because, you know, my, man, my mind sometimes is a little strange, and I need to see things. So I wanted to just, just, just a quick demonstration on what I used to think repenting was, and then what I realized what repenting was. Now, it says repent means to turn away from, right? So when I was young in, in, in the word, and I saw repenting, this is what I thought repenting was. Yeah, I thought it was a 360-degree thing. But to turn from something to something. What's that, 180? Turn from the world to the cross. How many of you remember Charlie Brown? Yeah, that, that cartoon. I, I, I had to read and, and watch them cartoons about Charlie Brown. But one of the, the characters in Charlie Brown that I, I just love, because she kind of reminded me of my sister, was Lucy. <laughs> oh, yeah, Miss Lucy. And it was this one episode where Lucy and Charlie Brown were standing there together, and Charlie Brown said to Lucy, you must be more loving. The world really needs love. You have to let yourself love to make this world a better place. Lucy, being Lucy, angrily whirls around and knocks Charlie Brown to the ground. She screams at him, look, blockhead, the world I love is people I can't stand. Now, I know y'all didn't want to laugh too loud because y'all didn't want your neighbors to think that that's how you feel sometimes. But I, I, I know, I, I know, I know some mornings you get up and go to work and can't stand your boss. Get up that morning, can't stand, well, I was going to say your, your, your mate, but I ain't going to say that. But, you know, can't stand your children some morning. Sometimes you get up and the, the, not the world, but the people of the world just get on your nerve. But guess what, Christian? Even when that happens, you must think about Jesus. I wonder sometimes if we remember that once sinners are convicted of sin, they must be encouraged, church, to go further. 
They must be told that though their case is sad right then, it's not hopeless. For there is hope for them in repenting. There can be a new beginning. The new saints were like newlyweds at the, in the new church. They just couldn't seem to be apart from one another. Their activities were all corporate activities, things the church did together, teaching, fellowshipping, breaking of bread, and praying. It was a church of very new believers who exhibited the vital signs of a new life in Christ. There was not, this was not a church that had arrived. It was a church that had a good start and was moving in the right direction. It was a church that loved God and God's new beginning. It was a spirit-filled church acting out God's love for one another while moving towards the fulfillment of the Great Commission. This church was setting the blueprint for the work that should be continued. Listen to Acts 2, 40 through, 2 through 47 from the Living Translation. Now this, this is, if there was a scripture that would make up this sermon this morning, this is where it's coming from. Acts 2, verses 40 through 42 through 47. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to following and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to pray. A deep sense of awe came, awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. The early church was a learning, fellowshipping, praying, all filled, power demonstrating, radically generous, consistent, glad, praise filled. Excuse me for a minute. I'm sweating up here like somebody poured water on me. Praise filled, well thought of growing body of Jesus followers who form a community, a community like the community of East Mount Zion. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and came to understand while, follow, while fellowshipping in the breaking of bread that their lives together could not be occasional or careless. It had to be deliberate, intentional, and real. As they cried out to God together, they devoted themselves to prayer and saw mighty things happen. Their fellowship was marked by the power of the Spirit of God. They were not bored. They were not watching the clock. They were filled with awe from the demonstrating wonders and signs that were being done through the apostles. Church, East Mount Zion, do you think if we came to Christ with expecting hearts, the Holy Spirit would do more miracles right here on 100th and Euclid? That first church was radically generous. They were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they had needs. Let us, East Mount Zion, continue to identify and be identified with the terms caring and giving. When a person hears, you know anything about that church on 100th and Euclid, that, that church called East Mount Zion? Let them not say, oh, they some well-dressed folk, although we are. Let them not say that they, that they are all uppity because we are not. Let them say that we are caring and giving people of God. 
that we would like to think that when you say I go and come from East Mount Zion where the pastor is, Pastor Cass, that the people will say, oh, you're that working church. Oh, you're that church that shows love. Oh, you that church. I, I got a friend that told me they had a problem and they sat up with somebody from East Mount Zion and they talked to me and they preached to me and they told me how much Jesus loved me. And you know what? Right now, I think I'm going to go down there to East Mount Zion and join up because nobody talked to me like that. As a working church. There was gladness because it was invested in the life of the church through the people of God. There was gladness in the great cause of the advancement of the gospel. Evangelism team. See, one, one of the things I, I just had a thought. That, 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 that kind of sounded like us a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was gladness because it was invested in the life of the church. Lifeline. I don't know if you've ever been to Lifeline, but if you've ever been to Lifeline, uh, Deacon Booth, yeah, we have fun. It's tiring. I, ha I hadn't been to Lifeline in a while, and one day when I was with my wife over at the hospital, I came over here to help Deacon Booth. He didn't notice, and I, I didn't tell anybody, but they got these great big bags of, of potatoes in little bags. I think they like five or ten pound bags of potatoes. And they was putting them potatoes where they needed to be, and it was a bag full of different bags. Deacon Booth told me, hey, you know, grab that bag and bring it over here. I was like, no problem. I done did it before. I went over there and grabbed that bag, thought I hurt myself. <laughs> but there was gladness and fun. And then evangelism. It's just a joy to be around them people. It's just a joy to be with that group. Reverend Anawa, when he gets happy, Reverend Anawa make me happy just doing this sometimes. I'm like, I know he's full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that evangelism team, though it's small at the moment, is mighty, mighty in the Lord because there is gladness in taking the word of God out to the lost people in the world. And because the church had Christ at its center, it could not help but be a church of passionate praise. <laughs> well, I don't know what y'all saw and heard this morning, but I know what I saw and heard this morning. I know what Elder Daniel has done with these voices. There was praise this morning. I don't know if you praised. If you didn't praise while they were singing or you wasn't here at the moment, now do me a favor, not y'all. But y'all, just do me a favor. Let's give the Lord a praise right now. Now, do you think that was passionate praise? Let me, let me, see, I can do that because I'm standing here. Let me take an advantage of a couple of people. East my Zion Choir, give me some passionate praise. Amen. The church was well thought of while having favor with the people as the work of Christ continued. Christians, from then to now, there should be a love in the church that the world envies. There should be a generosity in the church that the world marvels at. There should be a sweetness of fellowship in the church that the world can barely even understand. In that first church, its heart was consistent about being a loving, caring family. They were about building life rhythms together. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing. No, you do know Christ is coming back. 
And I hope you understand Christ is coming back soon. Now, you might be saying, like some people said in the Bible, he ain't came back in 2,000 years. Well, what if soon means immediately when he comes, he comes like that? Soon could just mean why you think you got time. Your time has ran out. So it might be right now. Although I know it ain't right now. now I know it ain't right now. Y'all know why I know it ain't right now? Because we still here. And I, I, don't know, I don't know about some of y'all. But one of the things I know when scripture talks about the catching up, that that we call the rapture, yeah. it talks about the saved ones. It talks about those that are in Christ. And see, I know, I know that I'm in Christ. Now, you might be saying, why are you bragging, Pastor? How can you brag like that? Well, I tell you how I brag like that, because of the cross. I can brag because of the cross. I can brag because of what Jesus did on that cross. I ain't do nothing but accept, believe, and have faith in what Jesus the Christ did on that cross. That's why I know the rapture ain't happened yet. Sister Williams, looking at you makes me know. Brother Jesse, either one makes me know. The Lord ain't came back yet. But he's coming. Trust that. When Christ is given the rule in his church, he draws all men to himself causing growth, a supernatural kind of growth. The Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. The Lord added. The Lord added by moving through those who are willing to testify. Moving through those that are willing to witness. Moving through those who will go out and evangelize and lift up the name of the Lord. This does not mean the church was inactive. There was a, this was a gospel proclaiming church, just like East Mount Zion. We not inactive. If we'd have been inactive, I couldn't stand here this morning. If we'd have been inactive, remember I said that we need to, to not forsake the gathering of the church. And you know, there are those who say, well, well during the pandemic, we, we, we couldn't get together. Oh, you were together. I, I don't know what you felt, but when I turned on the line and I saw pastors standing here in the church and I knew there was two, three, four hundred people online with me, I was together with y'all. Because remember, there is only one Holy Spirit. And that one Holy Spirit indwells each and every one of us. So where one is, the others can be. Now, if you didn't tune in, if you didn't check us out, then that's on you. I, I was just thinking how uh, some people, because of the pandemic, is at home being lonely. Some people, and it's all ages. I, I don't know if, if you heard or or listen to, there, there is a lot of suicides going on. And what's amazing is that a lot of the suicides are in young people. You know why I think it's in young people? Because they don't have Jesus. Because I can listen to some of the senior saints, and one of the things that I know they would say is praise the Lord because the Lord has done this or that for me. Praise the Lord because I know I'm not alone in this dark room because the Holy Spirit, God the Father, is there with me. And when things get so down and they're about ready to give up, this they can hold close to their heart. That's why the church has to get busy. That's why the church has to be a little different. 
That's why the church got to get out of these four walls and go out there in the world and tell a dying world about a living Savior called Jesus the Christ. That is our job. That is what we're supposed to do. I used to think my job was being an inspector at Alcoa. Then I got saved and I realized my job was testify about Jesus Christ while I'm at Alcoa. Your job is to testify, not to save, because, Lord, you can't save nobody. And one of the reasons you can't save nobody, because even though you are no longer a sinner, you still sin. And trust me when I tell you this. Your friends, your family, and those who think they know you are watching you once you claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there will be times that you will mess up. But I'm going to give you a little secret. When you mess up, just tell them, don't look at me, look at Jesus. Perhaps the Acts 2 church is not your idea of a perfect pattern for here at East Mount Zion. But it is an excellent example of a church that is marked by love. Love for God and love for one another. The Acts 2 church is not an example of a typical church, but it does have the making of an ordinary church. What is an ordinary church, you say, preacher? It is a fellowship with a shared life. It's a practical practicing body of Christ. What's an ordinary church? It's where we use our spiritual gifts to build each other up. It's where we do, with the help of the Holy Spirit and the power of grace, the one another's. You know, loving one another, instructing one another, praying for one another, rebuking one another, all the one another, to the glory of God until Jesus Christ comes to get his bride, the church. Each and every one of you, if you have accepted and have faith and believe in the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. If you have any family members who are already gone, but you know they in the Lord, they will rise at that trumpet call first. After that, we who are still alive and, and, and are left will be caught up together <laughs> with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Know that his coming back the first time is to come back to get you. The first time he's coming back to get his church. The second time he's coming back with you, take care of business. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with those words. Now, when I say encourage one another, it's talking about encourage each and every one of us. The first thing it's telling us to do is to encourage the church, to encourage the family, to encourage those who belong to the Lord, to give that love that only a Holy Spirit-filled person can give. This account in Acts 2 need not be mere history, for it truly is and remains to be a living possibility for each and every one of us, the church. And the only way forward as the work continues, honoring the work of the past, celebrating the present, and looking forward to the future. Amen? Amen. Now, one of the things that, you know, you know I, I like show and tell. So, one of the things that I wanted to just mention that East Mount Zion you are a loving church. East Mount Zion, you have not forgotten what it means to love one another. And I just want to show 
a little act. Because I thought about it. I said, how can I demonstrate the love of East Mount Zion? How can I demonstrate what it is we do to show each other, not just the world, but to show each other how we love? Well, as some of you know, maybe all of you don't know, my, my wife is battling with a few different kind of cancers at this particular time. And as she's doing that, you, East Mount Zion, you have lifted her up. You have prayed for her. You have called. So I have a picture here. What these are are envelopes. And it's only some envelopes from the cards you have sent her. If that's not love, I don't know what is. So I just want you to know that the love continues here at East Mount Zion. That not only do you demonstrate it by phone calls, by texting, but you sent cards. And I say, as my wife said, thank you. Thank you for that kind of love. For you see, as I started out saying that I needed to find a title, the work continues. Now, in case you're just wondering what all this is about, other than trying to uplift, other to try to light a fire under the church, it's also about evangelism. It is my job to offer you the salvation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, in the first sermon that Peter gave, he didn't open the doors of the church. He didn't invite anyone to come forward. But at this time, as the deacons stand in front of you with their hand out, you know why they stand, hold their hand out? Because they are a vision of the Lord and asking you to come forward if you do not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We're offering you salvation because it's only salvation that will get you into and out of the lake of fire. You know, they, I, I read things and I hear from different, different folks that there's not many preachers these days. They kind of shy away from talking about hell. I don't shy away. I'm old school. Just know that if you are not born again, and if you're not going to heaven, you will and are going to die one day. And there's only two places you can go, to heaven or the lake of fire. You might be saying, why do you keep saying lake of fire, pastor, preacher, and don't say hell? Because scripture says that the last place all of those that who are not in God will go will be the lake of fire and they will be there through eternity. For just like you will be with the Lord through eternity with your new body, those who are not in the Lord will be in the lake of fire with their new bodies for eternity. That's a scary thought. That's a scary thing to think about. So I just want to make this invitation. If you've not had an encounter with God and don't know how to have an encounter with God, find you a Christian. Find you a believer. Find you a true child of God and ask them, what should I do?
Romans 10, verses 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. We stand here waiting if the invitation has touched your heart. You know, sometimes when I'm in service, I stand here or I sit in my seat and the pastor gives an, an open invitation and no one comes. You know, some people get a little depressed about that. Some people say, nobody came to the invitation. Well, I don't know about you, but I like to think nobody came because everybody's already here. That this is the church. Show me doors you open. I don't have to ask because I know that's each and one of you's testimony that the Lord's been good to you. better than good to you. to offer I've offered it in case you're wondering you've opened the doors of the church you've made an invitation no one came so what are you doing we're worshiping right now we're praising the Lord we're lifting up in our spirit we're here having joy in the Lord I don't know what you came for this but I came to do a little bit more than preach. I came to have an encounter with God. I came to meet him here with you.
Well, I have a couple of announcements. You know, it's always, it's always hard for a preacher to interrupt the flow of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And I can't, I can't speak for most, but when that flow comes in music, it's really hard for me to shut it down. I guess in that statement, Elder Daniel, if I don't say it again, I say it now. Thank you. Y'all say, what you thanking for? For worship. What you thanking for? Did they sound good, y'all? Did the choir sound good this morning? Amen. Amen. All right, let me, let me, let me get through things so we can shut things down. But see, you can take this worship home with you. Don't have to end. Now, you continue to worship in your front room, in your bedroom, in your car, wherever you are, you can continue this worse. All right, I um, have two announcements real quick. On September 18th, there is two affairs that are going on. One is our blood saves lives and donate today. What y'all know about blood? Oh, amen, amen. East Mount Zion Baptist Church Blood Drive, 9990 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, Saturday, September 18th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Donor, donors will receive a limited edition college football T-shirt while supplies last, a $20 Amazon link via email, an assortment of gifts, compliments of Buckeye Health. Please visit redcrossblood.org and center sponsor and enter sponsors code East Mount Zion. That's the code E A S T M T Z I O N. Or call 1 800 Red Cross. Or Deacon McDowell. They can call your number. Or you can call Deacon McDowell. And I don't have his number right now. Our second announcement has to do with what is going on next week. The work continues. Our pastor's installation celebration, which starts Wednesday. It will be midweeks worship. Friday, there will be by Reverend Dr. Marcus Davidson. He will bring the message. But Saturday afternoon, actually Saturday morning and afternoon, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., East Mount Zion Baptist Church Community Impact and Love Day. That's my, that's my church daughter, Nicole, out there screaming and hollering. You want to holler again, Nicole? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the community event will offer a variety of free social services, food, drinks, games, and fun for all ages, educational advancement, financial management, health care resources, housing assistance, and voter re re resources, and registration. So come out, invite your friends. Invite your relatives, tell them to come on down here Saturday between 9 o'clock and 3 p.m. Also, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> the installation. All right, what does they say? Installation, y'all. What was that? What, 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 that, that racetrack commercial? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Bring it here. Bring it on down to East Mount Zion. There will be at 1045, Reverend Jim, Jimmy D. Greer from Nashville, Tennessee. The Friendship Missionary Baptist Church will be our preacher that morning. 
But at 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, what time? Okay. We will have our installation service. We will, it, it's, been, it's been a year, it's been some time, but this time COVID's not gonna hold it up. We going to have the installation service. But somebody said, who we installate? <laughs> we are installing our own Reverend Dr. Brian A. Cash. Now, I'm not lifting that young man up above Jesus the Christ. I'm not putting him on a pedestal because he's human like the rest of us. But he is my pastor. So come on out. Celebrate. And if COVID gets in the way, pray. Y'all know these cards. I choose to believe. I choose to believe that we're going to bring the glory of God that day. Amen? Amen. Sister Heather Burton, you want to come forward? She's looking at me like, what you want? I just want you up here. I just want y'all to say, this is my other church daughter. Give her an amen. Meanwhile, up here. Well, why are you up here? Can I emphasize that registration, registration, registration is not enough. We have to have registration. Register. Amen. I had to register to be here this morning. Have you enjoyed service? Amen. Have you felt the flowing of the Holy Spirit? All I can say is I hope you got something out of worship this morning. And that you felt the presence of the Lord. As I give our benediction, uh, after I give the benediction, do not move. Sister Burton is, has some more information for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his faith forever shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you to give you peace. May he bless you when you're going in and you're going out. You're raising up even you're falling down. May the Lord be a blessing to all of you, even to the gifts that you give this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Dr. Burke. Amen, amen, amen. The blessing of the Lord is upon you. As we prepare to leave this place, let's keep our minds and hearts stayed on Jesus Christ so that we may go out and be a light unto a dying world. We will also leave this place decently and in order. Uh, we will be directed by our ushers, so if our ushers can get in place with the offering baskets, uh, there will be an offering basket to the door to my right and also our main door to the left. 
Again, if our ushers can get in place to dismiss our congregation. Remember, we will dismiss this place decently in order. In addition, there are t-shirts available still for sale, but they are small sizes, and those sizes, um, or those t-shirts are available in the seniors room, and you can follow Sister Christine Walsh at that time. All visitors, please stand. If we have any visitors with us this morning, please stand. We have a special gift for you for being with us this morning, and so we'll ask for you to go ahead and dismiss and follow Sister Christine Walsh, who was at the, she's at the door right there, so if our visitors can please follow Sister Christine Walsh. Let's first dismiss our deacons. Deacons, thank you. We will